Hi, and welcome to the fourth unit of week one of our course from Media Computation to Data Science. Um, today, we're going to work with notes, with music. That's one of my favorite subjects. As you know, in Snap, in the sound category, we have some music blocks. They're the blocks called Play Note. And if we click on it, it plays a note, and notes are represented as numbers. Um, when we click on the note input field, we get a little piano keyboard in which we can select some notes. For example, we can um, start with the note E, which would be um, 64. Then we play the note E. We can get another note out, and we can choose, for example, um, um, uh, note 67, which is G, um, things like that, and, and, and this way we can, we can stick them together to play little melodies. Now, um, an important part about abstraction, and I'm going to show you in a while what's cool about it, is to separate the data that is in the functions from the functionality itself. So instead of playing these two nodes, 67 and 64, we could make a list and put in these two numbers, 67 and 64, and we could do, use a loop to play them. We could loop over the items in the list and um, play each item. So now we have a song of two notes. Now how cool would it be to actually encode a whole song that way? So here are some numbers that represent a song you might know. It's 67, 65, 64, 67, 72, 74, 76, and again, 74. Uh, how about we play that? This is a little song. Let's listen to it. Oh, I made a mistake. Did you recognize the song? Since this is the beauty and joy of computing, this is glory hallelujah. So the last node should be this. Let's play it again. So it's somehow right, but also somehow wrong. And what's wrong about it is that now all the notes are playing at the exact same speed. Whereas in the actual melody, the length of each node um, can be different. So how would we do this? We could have another list in which we have the length of the beats, but then how would we get these together? So what we really need is we need this item to kind of have two parts. So this could be a note, and then we would enumerate what is ever in here, and we would say play item one of the note here, and the duration would be the second part, the item two of that note. So now we would have to reformulate our song so that we put also um, accommodate the lengths of the notes. So to do this, we could do just have another list, and instead of writing 67, we could say, okay, the first note is 67, but it's played for, let me tell you this, 1.75 beats. So we would put that into the first slot. We take the next one, that's 65. So we say this is 65, and this is only for a quarter of a beat, so it's 4.25 beats. And so we do this with every node. Now it's 64. And this is 0.75 beats. Now it's 67. And that's again a quarter of a beat. 
0.25. Take out another one, 72. And that's again a longer one, 0.75. Three quarters of a beat. And the 74 is again a quarter of a beat. Now the last two notes are long notes. 60, the 76 is two beats long. And the 72 is also two beats long. So here now is our song. Let's play this. Oh, I made a mistake. I said item note of. It has to be item one of the note. Let's try this again. It is glory, hallelujah. It is a bit on the slow side. Let's actually adjust the tempo. So again, in the sound category, we can change the tempo or we can set the tempo. By default, it's 60 beats per minute. That's a bit on the slow side. Let's do 120 beats per minute. And let's again play it. Okay, we made a song. So now, what we can do with this complex list structure is we can actually assign it to a song. We just made ourselves a song. I'm gonna make a variable called song, and I'm going to assign it to what's inside this list. Now watch what happens. In this watcher, you will see the data that goes into here. So if I click on this, we get a list. But here's the cool thing. Actually, what we're seeing is a table. How can that be? In Snap, a table is just a list of lists. Here we're building one big list, with several sublists. So these lists in here are the rows in the table. And we can right click to actually see um, the table as what it is, a list of lists. Um, and we can switch back to again see it as a table. So now we have a song represented as a table. We can put it in here can put this away and let's play it again. So this is just about right. We've defined a data structure for a song. So now we can take this script actually and make a new block that plays a song. So we say play song and we want to enter a song for this. Now the song is going to be an input it is going to be a list. And then we're defining this block such that we drag in here what we defined. And um, so we want to enumerate each note of the song and play it. And I'm saying apply, apply now. And here's my play song block. Now I can play a song. So what is cool about putting the data for music into a table, into a list of lists, rather than just dragging out these play note blocks and stacking them in one big stack? Because that also works. Once we have stuff as data, once we have it as numbers, we can transform those numbers. This is something we're going to show you next week. Here's a little preview. I made a little block that transposes a song. So I can put in the song here um, and I can transpose it. So if you look at the notes here, 67, 65, what if I want to transpose it by, let's say, four half notes? Now I'm clicking, clicking on this and you can see I'm changing the numbers in the first column. This is kind of cool 
because now we can, for example, do something like this. We can make a little loop where we play the song three times and um, we're starting at zero, we're playing it four times, and we're actually transposing it. We're, we're going one step higher at every repetition. Let's listen to this. This is like what you do when you sing in a chorus and you warm up before um, singing together. Um, so this is something where data, abstracting data from functions is really cool. And um, this is a way how you can make your own blog to play any kind of song. Another big idea about music is not just playing one note, but playing several notes together, playing a chord, playing harmony. How could we do that? So we can play a note. Let's play the note 64 for one beat. And we can play the note 67 for one beat. But if we stick them together, one plays after the other. How can we play them at the same time? Remember parallelism? I can make it so that if I click the green flag and make two scripts, then both of these scripts will run at the same time. Now I'm clicking the green flag and I'm getting an interval, two notes played at the same time. Now, wouldn't it be cool if we could do this in one block? So here's one way we could do it. We can use the launch block. So we can launch one, and we can launch the other. And now both should play at the same time. Listen to this. So what launch does, it starts a new process, a new thread, as we say, to play something. Okay, now how can we make a block that plays an arbitrary list of notes all at the same time? Well, let's make a new block. Let's say play chord, and um, the chord is going to be um, some notes. So the notes, again, is going to be an input we can specify it to be a list. Um, now what we want to do is we want to go for each item of notes. Actually, what we're going to do is we want to put in this here and launch it. And then we launch, we play the note for one beat. If we want, we can also extend this here. We can say, for duration beats. And we can say the duration is also going to be an input. And it can be, you know, a number by default. You can say one. And then we can say we're playing this for a duration of beats. Um, let's actually try this. So here's my play chord song for one beat. I'm going to make a little list, in which I'm again going to say 64 and 67. So I want to play these notes together. Now listen up. I'm just hearing one note. Why is that? Let's try this again. It should be playing two notes. Now, this is a little tricky. When I first prepared this, um, I was astonished, and then it dawned on me what the problem is. Now, this is starting a new script in here. Now, as it is starting the, the new script, as it is checking out which note to play, it has already changed 
on the outside. So what we're hearing is just the last note and we're hearing two scripts playing the same note. Now in order to make sure that each script plays the note it is supposed to play, we have to expand the launch block and take the, the item, the note that's supposed to be played from in here to out here. So it gets evaluated before this script is started. Then in here we can just leave this blank. So it, it's an implicit parameter and it will play whatever is passed into this. Now let's apply this. Let's try this again. Now I'm actually hearing two notes. Let's do this for, for two beats. Let's try this again. That's kind of nice. Let's actually try a third one. Um, the third one is going to be 72. So now we should hear three notes together. That is true. But if you listen closely, what happens is they're not exactly starting at the same time. They're kind of, it's like an arpeggio. They're starting one after the other. And we can get rid of this by doing it very fast. So you remember how we do things very fast. We take the warp block and we warp the for each block. Now let's listen to this again. Now they're starting at the exact same time. But notice something else. As I'm clicking on here, the block flashes just very quickly and then it stops flashing. So what I wanted, I like, um, I wanted to actually wait and flash all the time while it is playing for the whole two beats. Now, since this is launching a new thread for every um, note, the block itself terminates right away. So I have to force it to wait until all these blocks have finished playing. And I can do this by using the rest block. The rest block is the same thing as a wait block, except it takes beats instead of seconds as an input. So after I'm launching all the nodes, I want to rest for the duration so they all get a chance to play until they're done. Now let me apply this again and try this. And you can see it keeps, um, uh, it keeps being highlighted. So now what we should be able to do is we should be able to duplicate this. Let's do another one that is going to be 65 and 69. Let's hear this. Ah, that's the second one. Let's actually duplicate this more. So now we're doing 65, 67, 71. Aha. Uh -huh. And we're again duplicating this one. And let's stack them all together. Now we have a little stack of chords. And uh, if I did everything right, we should hear a nice cadence, a nice chord progression. Here's harmony and snap. Folks, this is it about music. Um, I hope you enjoy this. Um, we got some nice exercises for you to try some of your own songs. Um, see you in the forums.